Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast, Secrets of the Saddle, All Things Cycling podcast with your host, Sylvie Dow. Now, before we get started, I have a couple freebies for you. And before you go, um, before you go check them out, go and follow me on Instagram for more cycling tips. Okay, so that's Sylvie Dow underscore cyclist. Um, and I'll see you there. So my free downloads, there are three of them. The first one is my nine favorite hill climbing skills downloads. So there's nine in there. Go try them out. Next time you do hill repeats, do them with purpose. And that is what's going to give you the performance improvement. If you go out and you have something very specific to work on. The next thing is my gear bin checklist. Now, if you're one of those people who kind of is like all over the place, maybe you show up late because you can't find this, you can't find that. Get this list check out the bike bin or bike bag that I use. Um, a lot of my club members have purchased it just to get organized. And what we do is we just keep it in our car with all of our stuff in it. So literally all I have to do is take that with me, put it in my trunk, my shoes, my helmet, my gloves, my food, my, uh, you know, my chamois butter, my sunscreen, everything's in there. So I never have to go looking for anything. And the last thing is, is my bike maintenance uh, recording. So it's an hour, but this hour is going to give you so much information about how to use the tools that you need to be carrying with you on a daily when you're going out riding, how to use them, how to take your back wheel off, how to change a tire, how to patch a tube, how to uh, repair a broken chain, um, and all sorts of other things in between. So go to askcoachsylvie.com to download all your free um, uh, documents and that recording. And I'd love to know your feedback on them. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram for more amazing tips. Take care and enjoy the episode. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming back for another amazing episode of Secrets from the Saddle, All Things Cycling with your host, Sylvie Dow. And we have the amazing Jay Lamoureux. He is sitting in Milton right now. He is part of the Canadian uh, Pursuit team that is heading to Tokyo. So we're, I'm so glad that he um, has agreed to do this being so close. And I can just imagine that uh, things are heating up with regards to travel and everything. So before we bring Jay out, I am just going to go into a little bit of his bio and then we're going to get right into, I have a whole list of things that we are going to be asking Jay and he might take a bite of, of his sandwich while <laughs> I introduce him because he just finished his ride and it is kind of almost lunchtime. So chow down one more time there, Jay. Well, I... <laughs> well, I give him a little bit of a bio um, of his background. So Jay is a key contributor to the Canadian rise of the men's team pursuit. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, a career highlight came in 2019, which is, I think that was like everybody's last hurrah at racing um, at the UCI track world championships where the team exceeded expectations by racing for a bronze medal against the Danish squad and finishing fourth overall. Super cool. But in 2015, if we backtrack, uh, Jay was diagnosed with severe patella femoral syndrome. And we're gonna maybe just touch a little bit on that and how we came back from that, because that can be seriously um, debilitating where he was actually said that, you know, um, the condition affected his knee so much that he might not be able to make a comeback. Um, and, but Jay's going to talk about that because the year after he came back and won the silver medal at Pan Am championships. So way to go. And we'll have to hear all about that. And then 17, he stood at his first world cup podium as a team pursuit won silver in Milton. So that's when everybody was back for home stretch. And then we have 2018, where he competed in track, road and track cycling in the Commonwealth on the Golden Coast of Australia. Gosh, lots of travel. I love these. <laughs> but 
Jay's, um, we're just going to talk a little bit about interest, which we are going to dive into as well. Um, what? You were going to be a marine biologist? I missed that one. Mm -hmm. With Parks Canada, he also enjoys cooking, fly fishing, hiking, camping, and kayaking, and playing Minesweeper. <laughs> Does that keep you up late at night? Not, no, not at all. No. <laughs> Welcome, Jay, to the podcast. We're so excited to have you. Thank you, Sylvie. All right. So I always love to get started by asking everyone how they got into cycling. So, Jay, how did you, how did cycling come into your life? Um, well, it kind of came into my life two times. Uh, the first time uh, I was quite young, uh, I'd always kind of... Uh, I watched the Tour de France. I had friends who cycled and I kind of wanted to give it a shot. My dad was into mountain biking. So uh, I think I was probably, you know, 10, 12 years old. And um, I would go uh, bike touring with my father. Um, we'd oh. pack up our bikes, go camp for the weekend, ride home. Um, and then I did a little bit of like recreational cycling on the side as well with some friends. Um, uh, like a small club team and it kind of, uh, I guess I had other hobbies, other passions, and I kind of lost focus on it for a little bit. Um, but then it, it really came back to me, uh, in high school. Um, I had been a, a distance runner for my whole life and, um, I like cross country. Yeah. Cross country. Um, okay. And I, I was kind of searching for something more. I don't know, like running's not always the most social activity. And uh, I had a, one of my best boring. friends. boring. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I, won't, I won't start any, anything too heated here. Yeah. Um, but I'll back uh, it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, had, I fell into a really good community in Victoria. Um, there was some racing through my high school, uh, some cycling. and. Um, yeah, kind of just blossomed from there and I started racing more and being more into the competitive side and it's kind of led me to here. I've just, uh, you know, been passionate about it and supported by a really amazing cycling community in Victoria. I mean, like they, they have this uh, new initiative, Cycling Canada and the, the 94 project. So it's really cool that they're finally like uh, recognizing that Victoria's got a really good, uh, place to foster talent so I'm pretty excited about that and yeah I came out of that so it's pretty cool oh uh, because you know what more I talked to a lot of Canadian cyclists is that's where they went to train yeah it was in Victoria yeah so it seems like a huge I and mean, I have friends who live in Victoria as well it seems like a huge mecca for cycling not unlike like mountain biking but are the funds you're talking about is that the can fund I'm talking. I'm talking about the '94 Commonwealth Games Fund. Oh, um, okay. So I don't know if you heard, but Cycling Canada just they just launched a or in partnership with um, the '94 Commonwealth Games Fund. Um, there's a big um, new kind of infrastructure. I'm I'm guessing it'll be uh, coaching support for athletes going out there and it's not just cycling it's going to be triathlon and athletics as well and it might it might involve like um a new facility or just support i'm not 100 sure exactly what it's going to be but there's going to be a lot of funding put into victoria and um the athletics community so that's yeah cool. yeah it seems like a lot of people go there and live and train yeah yeah as, I'm, yeah we have uh i mean most most uh, summer athletes go there to train during the winter time. So yeah, most most northern Canadian athletes, right? Exactly. <laughs> or like Quebec and Ontario and Precisely. flock there. Or go to Arizona. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, especially yeah. during the pandemic too. I mean, you, when you couldn't go across the border, we had everyone there, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you forced to stay in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so. In your teenage years, you got into cycling. Now, how did you get into like making, like where are the steps of, like, did you race with 
uh, a junior team that led you to a pro team that got you to camp? like, what were those steps that found you that got, cause it was like, you done Victoria and then you landed here. Like, yeah. well, <laughs> what were the steps that, uh, happened for you? Um, so let's think, um, <laughs> I mean, triple shot cycling was more or less my first, my first racing team. It's just a local club team in Victoria. Okay. And, um, I Are ended still up, around? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Okay. Um, I ended up racing uh, kind of across the country. I, I did my first nationals with them. I placed third at U23 Road Nationals, which was a really big okay. stepping stone for me. Um, it definitely got me noticed by a lot of teams, and um, mm. I, had, I had some pro offers, um, and I ended up racing closer to home with uh, Trek for a couple of years. Um, and then after that, I, uh, joined the national team and at the, at the time, the national team and race clean, um, were affiliated. So like we had, um, it was a, it's a national trade team, but we raced in Europe. So I was with them for two oh. years. Um, and it, at the, at the time it was required to be on race clean to be on the national team um okay yeah it was um uh, it was just i was part of the structure of siphon canada at the time at uh, that time yeah okay uh, not it's not like that anymore um mm -hmm. but yeah so uh, i had to be on race clean and uh race in europe uh for a few projects um okay. yeah I, I i never had the opportunity to really um I had, to, yes, yeah. I had to more or less choose between professional road cycling and and track cycling the olympic oh. at that time so i went well, with uh, the olympics which was always kind of my my, my goal <laughs> so as part of being as being part of that team was track part of that or was it all specifically road like how did you get into track or did you do both or uh, um, well, I, I had already, I'd, I'd always ridden track, um, uh, from an early okay. age like on, on triple shot, like I said before. Um, oh, okay. Okay. And, uh, I'd always gone to like track nationals and stuff like that. Um, and been, I, is that where you placed? Uh, well, I was, I did well on the road as well early okay. in my career, but then I, yeah, I came to track nationals did quite well in like the individual pursuit and stuff like that so that's how mm -hmm. it, i got noticed as well for the national team and then on race clean as well yeah it's all those little steps eh because yeah, like, it's just yeah. about being noticed at nationals it does seem to be a, a big help for sure <laughs> yeah well i mean if you go to nationals uh either with a team or can you, you can go individually can you not yeah, you can. I mean, uh, it's more expensive. as an independent, of course. Yeah, and then place well, and then get noticed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So then that that led you to getting on to the track team. That was nice. So when? So then you? So then? How did you? So that was before two thousand fifteen. Yes. Yeah. Because then you had the issue. Yeah, I'm injury. Yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, was that I mean, early in your early in your career from overuse or? Yeah, it was an overuse injury. Um, not you know, like uh, the 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 saying that I like to to use is that I was um, I had forgotten that I, to be a good athlete. Uh, I was being a good cyclist, but not just but not a good athlete right so i kind of forgot some of the fundamentals about you know like making sure that i'm strong going into the season and like having you know like setting up my bike properly and stuff like that that i've learned immensely from since um, so. so you want to talk a little bit about that for everybody else who's probably wondering like what are you talking about like being a good athlete well i mean i think there's a lot of cyclists out there that they love the sport. They love the culture. They love to go rip with their buddies on the weekend and socialize. But I mean, you are 
you know, you are putting your body through, you know, mm -hmm. the ringer sometimes, and you have to work with your body. You have to, you know, help it out, give it a helping hand sometimes. And, you know, doing, you know, some stretching or proper nutrition, <laughs> you know, having a look at your position on the bike, um, mm -hmm. being strong going into the season, you know, doing some like core and strength work and stuff like that. I think are really pretty important for being a, a good athlete. Yeah. yeah, let's talk about that. And then if you don't, your body will definitely give you a little signal that mm. exactly, exactly. <laughs> so how did that come about? Did it just sort of like, how did you figure that out? How did I figure out like, that I was that I was injured or how to figure out? that? Yeah, like, did it did it just happen over time? Or did you did it like, how did it stop you? Let's just talk a little of, bit about that. Yeah, it, I mean, it was probably the most unopportune time I could have had it it was at my very <laughs> it, it always is <laughs> yeah my very first like national team road camp um this was right before um the london worlds in 2015 um and i was at camp i i rode i might have done a week of the camp in 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 california with the with the guys and mm. yeah, after a few days i was like riding by myself my coach was like okay well you know, like your knees, your knees sore. So try to like ride some flats, you know, keep the cadence high and stuff like that. And yeah. my body was having absolutely none of it. It was just, it flared up. And as soon as like, yeah, my, my knee was kind of flared up. It just mm. as like any inflammation goes, it just gets worse and worse until you give it rest or you get the inflammation down. Right. Now, was it because like you talked about your setup, was it because of your cleat position was because your like, do you know what? Um, I would, I would say that, um, like I had never, I had never been, um, like strength focused before the season. I definitely did like some core and a bit of lifting and stuff like that. But as soon as you get into the national team, um, and especially like the team pursuit squad, it's, it's a big, big shift in like what is demanded from your body. And right. I was just demanding a bit too much that, and my body wasn't really prepared for it. So, uh, it's a, it's so a now story. you preach. It's a story Go of ahead. as well. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's and the older, the older you get, the more you appreciate that you have to do that to, Absolutely. to, <laughs> because like yeah so I that's will that's a lot of what I focus on and and preach now it's like nutrition strength training along with all your fabulous cycling rides and and stuff like that and Definitely. rest and yeah so so how did you so you went in and you started rehabilitating yourself and you're like uh this is not going to put me out um I'm going to make a comeback yeah. Um, well, yeah, like I, like I was saying, um, I was flown home from the national team camp, oh. probably like halfway <laughs> through, just go home, go rest. Oh. Um, I had like quite a bit of physio. I literally had my knees taped up for like probably a month and I would just hobble around like my, <sighs> it was, it was so bad that I probably couldn't bend my knee much more than like, 30 or 40 degrees so oh, I mean wow. if like I would go for a walk and I have to stop probably halfway through like a short walk just to sit down and have a rest which was um I mean going from that from you know first my first national team camp to that was very disheartening so it was um it was definitely a low point for sure <laughs> <My son. laughs> I bet but a uh, little bit of a mindset shift just to not allow yourself to drop into the depths yeah. and and make a comeback like yeah well uh, yeah at that point I had just I had just changed coaches uh from my previous coach to my national team coach and my my previous coach was uh he worked with the Canadian Sports Institute in Victoria Ficey and he was like okay well let's get you in to Ficey let's get you an SNC coach, let's get you some good physio, let's get you a program. And mm -hmm. he was the one that really like believed in me, like thought that, you know, I was gonna, I had something to prove and that, 
you know, I was going to go somewhere. And um, he really like, he was kind of the, the olive branch or whatever. And um, set me up with like a really good program. And yeah, got me to the gym lifting. Um, oh, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, a lot of like preventative strength, strengthening. Um, and just like also motion for uh, a joint is like definitely um, helping it. Like, I mean, it, it's a healing motion for sure. Um, mm -hmm. as long as you're not overdoing it. So I was like on the zero G treadmill and stuff like that, doing a little bit of running. And I mean, like it was kind of just baby steps at the beginning, um, mm -hmm. like come in, work out, do a like 20 minute run. I don't know, something like that. And then we just built on there every day for like three or four months until I was wow. back on the bike. Um, and oh my gosh, four months something like that four or five months I probably took like mm -hmm. maybe a month off month or two off um just like taking like ibuprofen and and um like strong Voltaire and stuff like that try to get the inflammation down and then Whoa. after that it was just like build back up and that uh, obviously we got new built back up to something pretty good so yeah Amazing. It must have felt hard to really go back to the beginning, like the basics, yeah. you know, like you just want to like go and you're like, no, I have to allow this process to, yeah, to take place. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Another thing I learned um, through that, I'm sorry, yeah, all these mantras and stuff like that. No, no, go ahead. I, because I, I, this is what people need to hear because yeah. too many people like overdo it and just um yeah I, uh, back. the other mantra or cliche is um uh patience through distraction so i'm like i'm not always the most patient person but i can definitely distract myself with other things and um i find a lot of joy and you know not being overly focused on the moment or you know what's going wrong or whatever like that so i definitely like leaned heavily on some of my other hobbies um mm. and um like of course friends and family and stuff like that but yeah um it's nice to not have to focus on something that you're failing at and <laughs> instead focus on something that you're you're good at or you're succeeding at in the moment and yeah. just allow your like not like not that you're not gonna still put the hard work in mm -hmm. but just not always be like mentally and you know cued in on what you're doing wrong or what you should be doing it's just like that's immense stress on yourself you want to just right. give a break and just focus on something else and let the process happen by itself yeah yeah is that where the fly fishing came in i mean i've been always, i've been always fly fishing my whole life and it was just uh but you got to do a little bit more just had to, yeah i got to do a little bit more <laughs> to focus on yeah that and uh definitely gave me um yeah a nice break from just like the I'm failing at cycling right now so uh, well you know I'm sure you might you might have felt that way but jumping into things that like you said that you're you're good at you enjoy and yeah. allow the process to be the process yeah. because it's yeah. some you know like it's, it's something you can't force exactly and, and um and make go fast you know what i mean yeah. but and well I, I hope everybody got a piece of that because that is super important um more people are way stressed out about being set back and i'm just like wow this is the best thing ever i get to do something now <laughs> you know, maybe i just embrace a little bit more yeah. um but so but that set you up for for where you are because imagine if you had pushed through and and you know not taking the time to get better then you would have just been re-injured re you know just in a this vicious cycle and um and it's good that you you know you made that realization you change coaches and things like that yeah so let's move on to last year you had the pandemic you're all like excited about 
going to Tokyo. And so how did that affect you? You're like, there's another thing, you know, like, what? <laughs> oh my God, we got another year to like focus. Yeah. How was that? How did that affect you? Cause it affected a lot of athletes differently. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I mean, of course, like it was frustrating. It was, yeah. uh, there's just so many emotions that I was feeling, um, you know, you worked such a long time and all of a sudden, like <laughs> team Canada has pulled out, like at, at the moment, um when the games were still going on and we decided to boycott them there was like a lot of frustration um like why did we have to be the first one and like now I look back on it and I'm like yeah that was a it was a great like um like great leadership thing for Canada to do and that like mm -hmm. it was the right thing but in the moment I was pretty frustrated with like why would why would we be the first ones like yeah know? I uh, just, I just didn't understand. Um, <laughs> but you know, as it, as it kind of progressed and other people, other people pulled out and the seriousness of like the whole, uh, pandemic yeah. kind of unraveled and showed itself. Then it was like, okay, well, yeah, this was the right thing to do. And I'm glad that, you know, we, we called it off for the year and stuff like that. Um, still like, you know, I had, uh, demanded a lot of my body over the last, over that year. And, Mm -hmm. you know asking myself to do that again is um it's definitely a big a big ask for sure it's it's not really fair to my my body that's for sure when you're um, yeah you know, so and into the red that many times and then yeah. do that again i guess like <laughs> oh my god yeah I, that's that's what i can't even imagine be like oh my god i've got to do all of that all over so how do you how does a coach wind you down to then build you up again yeah like uh, I mean that, we all that have... must have been like a serious calculations like you know what I mean like yeah. working with different athletes and yeah I think I think at the heart of that is communication with mm -hmm. your coach and um I had a good communication with with my coach Jono and we kind of we chatted on the phone and we were like, okay, well, I mean, we don't, we don't really have to be going well for a while. So just have a chill, like, you know, take the time that you need to, you know, find your why and um, go, you know, have a good time and enjoy life for a bit. And then we'll come back to it and be refreshed and ready to, you know, go again. So I took the time and I went out there and explored and had a good time and you know kind of okay what did you do oh. because did he say like okay you know we'll just pretend like you finished the this year's olympics now you always have that downtime you know go and then in december we're gonna get back at it or did he give you like a time frame and you're like okay you've got like four months to there wasn't really a time frame at the beginning um yeah a lot of uncertainty for sure yeah, I'm trying to remember. I think it was like, it was probably mm, April or May. Yeah. yeah. Um, that they, yeah, they canceled the games. And then mm -hmm. we had our first camp back. I want to say it was like, yeah, June, I think it was last year. Um, but in like the interim there, it was just like touch and go. Like we'd have a, Skype meeting every now and then just to kind of go over some of the the rough details of what was going on and what mm -hmm. we thought and what the COC was saying what like in Canada was saying and what the like provincial regulations were you know so um it was yeah it was definitely like touch and go um and most of that time was just um for me at least uh it was kind of just up to up to what I wanted to do and I know mm -hmm. there are some other guys in, in the TP squad that having some structure was very important for them. And yeah. they still had training, like some regiment in their life. And um, yeah, it just really goes to show like how individual everyone is with their, you know, their happiness or their content. And yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I just needed to be, you know, liberated and some guys needed to be, 
<laughs> so uh, yeah, I just like woohoo, let's go. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> to go have a couple beers and you know enjoy the, yeah, enjoy really. the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> pizza beer yeah. so what are the couple things that you embraced in that time like it's kind of cool because that you're like oh gosh you know and as back to your hobbies right yeah um yeah. what do you love doing outside of cycling exactly. and it's good that you have them because a lot of people don't like they just they're all encompassed in one thing um and uh not much else yeah so what'd you do yeah. What did you um, do to pass the time? Well, we have a family farm up island in, in on Vancouver Island. Ooh. Um, so we have like some cattle, we have some sheep, a few horses. And um, as anyone knows that that owns a farm, there's always something to do on the farm. Oh, yeah. Um, so <laughs> I, I ended up living up there for, I don't know, at least a couple months. And just, you know, the daily chore and kind of thing, you know, there's a fence mm -hmm. to go be fixed you know you gotta put the animals in the other in another paddock or I don't know there was you know there's a plethora of things to do so that kept me <laughs> busy and pretty happy um yeah I was quite content to do all that stuff. had it been a long time since you've been there like spent yeah I spent quite a bit of time there yeah it had been quite a while um so it was nice to be there nice to be kind of away from the the hustle and bustle of like um uh, city and also just like the traveling lifestyle just to be grand yeah. for a little bit that was a big help for sure oh yeah just re uh, recharge yeah god it's nice to have that option to be able to hang out in the country yeah i'm very lucky for sure yeah i grew up on a farm i know exactly what you mean it's just like ooh. especially being away and and being you know because like basically you had to be in one spot and not move so we're better to be right definitely so you mentioned you did some bike touring yeah a first time ever a little solo trip what was that like yeah i hadn't i Get had your legs back i hadn't really uh done too much solo solo uh bike packing i've done some solo hiking before uh but this was the uh, it was um definitely kind of into the wild for me um Ooh. i yeah, i rode from victoria all the way to calgary on um the the great trail or the trans canada <gasps> trail oh cool so a lot of this is like very remote um i probably like a lot of it i do see signs where it was like don't do this by yourself like um you should have like a buddy or at least like i i, I would always have like um tell people like where i'm riding from and to and i had my my dad's um gps tracker or a or a gps locator beacon or whatever so if i really right, got right. into a sticky, sticky situation um i would have been okay um but yeah there was uh there was definitely some times where you know you're at least 20 30 kilometers from like any sort of road or any back road or anything like that and you know you're seeing grizzly bear poop and stuff like that all over the trail and you're just thinking wow i'm really out there i really hope something's not going to happen <laughs> why not didn't bring something really well scented like you know uh i don't know like baloney or something <laughs> you know that the bear can smell like oh yeah. here he comes again there's another side yeah, <laughs> go on the track that's for sure <laughs> well that's super cool because so now like you got back at it um and obviously you've been probably for the last since january six months i would imagine you've been back in just getting back into focus for tokyo and because it's like super close oh my gosh it's like the tour de france tokyo like everything's kind of like all very exciting this year because there's you know nothing happening last year everybody was like stuck in their yeah. patios or <laughs> basements <laughs> riding but so tell us about like kind of what you've been up to with the team now that things have definitely been open and you can get back to i imagine you've been back they brought you back to milton like a couple months ago to train uh so we, like I said before, we had these, we have these short camps now. It's, um, yeah, yeah. we, we kind of had the opportunity to go back to the drawing board 
um, mm -hmm. and try something a bit new because we qualified uh -huh. uh, we qualified eighth out of the eight teams. Mm -hmm. um, so we had nothing to lose, and we wanted to try something new, some like a, a more mo of a modern approach to team pursuiting. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're trying. Yeah, What's we're trying. That? Can you uh, share? I don't know if I can share. Well, this won't be aired <laughs> well during the Olympics. <laughs> well, I mean, I can I can kind of just give like a, a brief summary of like we. So a different camps, strategy. Are, yeah, these short camps are very intense we come here to do mm -hmm. strength and anaerobic and neuromuscular conditioning okay. and we just pack as much as possible into two and a half weeks we have like one rest day over the two and a half weeks we just go mm -hmm. as hard as we possibly can and then we have like a, a couple days on either side to recover and mm -hmm. we all fly back to our hometowns to do aerobic conditioning um whether that be uh just general aerobic or um like time trial specific stuff on the tt bikes mm -hmm. um or like a bit of like uh 30 30s stuff like that uh, yeah. a bit more like anaerobic um but that's been the the model for the last uh like a year and a half or so mm. yeah yeah was, so they're gonna uh, see how that works well, I mean, it's already working very well. Uh, Is it? Okay. <laughs> I imagine they would have changed yeah. it up if it wasn't. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, we've um we've already set another uh, Canadian record on um, Milton. So we're, we're pretty pleased with uh, how the training's going. And I think that um, we'll actually be fairly competitive at Tokyo. So we're all pretty fairly, excited. Fairly. Very. Well, I mean. Immensely. I think that like the <laughs> gold gold is kind of gone um in terms of like uh there were teams that were already like light years ahead uh, okay at the last world like say like the danes like setting um the world record like down to 44 um 344 for the 4k is like i mean they took six seconds off the world record i mean like how how is that even possible wow especially that speed. I mean, you know, like taking, it, it seemed like someone would take like maybe half a second off of the world record every year or so until that mm -hmm. world. And then people were taking multiple seconds off the world record and you're just like, how is this possible? Um, so I, I, I don't think that like, uh, we have a shot at the, um, at gold. Never say never, I, Jay, I, never I do, say I, never. I do think a medal is still possible though. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I like to have realistic expectations. <laughs> you never know what might happen on the Definitely. track. You never know. There, I think I think Tokyo will be a mixed mixed bag of results for sure. Yeah, it's kind of it'll be kind of interesting for sure to see how everybody has dealt with the last year. I yeah. think yeah. as athletes, um, as though I think you know, just watching Tokyo will be quite. Uh, I'm not going to say entertaining, but uh, interesting to see <laughs> where everybody falls, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. So, wow. So, I, all right. Well, how excited are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely, I'm pretty excited. Um, are you starting to get the, the butterflies and stuff? I'm trying to keep myself calm. I mean, that's <laughs> a bit too long to, to build into the games if I'm excited already. So I need to just like yeah, try to keep myself under wraps for a little bit longer. Um, but I definitely feel, there? I feel motivated by the proximity to the games now. I'm definitely trying, uh, you know, giving that 110% and, um, waking up every morning and being like, wow, like another day off the calendar. I can't wait, you know, stuff like that. So yeah. Yeah. Me. Yeah. It's like, I just got to make it there. My bike has to make it there. And yeah. <laughs> you know, the important parts. Oh, there you go. Now That's I can better. see you. I was, I God, was... I should have asked <laughs> a while ago you've been kind of like in the shadow yeah face. yeah well I first I guess the sun was out and then it got cloudy here yeah well oh my gosh so before we finish like now I don't know if you've you've thought this back this this far um some have some haven't but is this your second run at the games no the first the first time 
I had just got on the team and we didn't really have a, a shot. Um, we okay. hadn't really been a team pursuit team for long enough to be in the running for the qualifying. Cause like qualifying is over two years, right. For team pursuit. Right. Um, so you have to be, I mean, you have to have, have been established team for quite a while to be good enough to start qualifying two years right. away from the games. It's not like some sports that have like a trials, you know, a month yeah. out and then you're going. So right. it's more of a marathon process. Um, so the first time we didn't really have a shot. Um, I remember Remy Pelichewa, I don't know if you know him. Um, mm-hmm. he, uh, he had a shot going for the Omnium. Um, but he didn't end up going because of an injury called a really poorly timed collarbone break, um, which was, yeah, I know that was awful. I felt so bad for the man. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is, this is the first time we really have had a shot at going for quite some time. I think it was, um, I think it was the mid seventies was the last time that Canada sent a men's team pursuit squad to the. Oh my gosh. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But it's, it's also about having all four of you like literally on the same level of fitness Yeah. to make it all work, yeah. you know? Um, I don't know. I've done a team time trial and I'm just like, wow, Jesus, <laughs> you know, like you just, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things in play for sure. Oh, now, yeah. have you thought about after the Olympics? Like, yeah. I know Worlds comes up, but I'm not talking about competition. I'm talking about your, you know, your the next steps. Yeah, like, continue, retire, uh, career, school, marine biology. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, I'm planning to go back to school um, for the spring semester. Um, okay uh 2022 or whatever so um Mm -hmm. that's my next step i'm going to take the fall off um to just you know have a break and relax and stuff like that yeah are you gonna you know so you're not gonna do worlds you're not gonna continue on to like you're just like that's good for me um i i'm like i'm i'm definitely feeling quite burnt out at the moment but i'm not gonna rule it out like um i I do. I definitely enjoy. I, I still enjoy cycling. Um, mm-hmm. Certain. I mean, like certain aspects, a bit more than others. Um, but like uh, Ariane's planning to carry on till Commonwealth Games, and you know, I might carry right. on for sure. Um, but yeah, I don't want to really rule anything out just yet. I want to like. I want to do real life things. I think that's pretty important for, um, you know, for like. Um, my development as a person and mm-hmm. I certainly feel like uh I want to have a career the next time that I or at least after the next games um I want to have like a proper career and you know start chugging away at you know uh, the real life stuff so uh, I think that's yeah. important for for me at least well with marine biology you can join um uh Mike Woods with his pursuit for you know, um, oh, yeah. clean environment and, Definitely. you know, yeah, I mean, being, being land, from the, water. Being from the West Coast, I mean, that's, uh, that's kind of what we grow up, you know, you're always so connected to nature and stuff like that. Yeah. You got you kind of start realizing, wow, like, well, we have to preserve some of this for our kids and our grandkids and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it's important for yeah. me. So maybe we should have you and Ariane on here after the, <laughs> after the Olympics. I know everything kind of stems, like decisions stem on like the results, right? Like if you guys do like stupendous, yeah. I bet you, you'll probably go to the next one. Yeah. I'm guessing. Um, and, uh, and, and then in January, take your, when is Commonwealth? Is Commonwealth November? Uh, or is that next year? Because Worlds is November? I think Commonwealth is next summer. Oh, so it's another year. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, wow, so many things. But I'm excited to to hear that you're going back to school because I think think education is super important. Yeah. And marine biology, all that's fun. Did you start it? Um, I've, I've done a couple courses at college so far. 
um, and a couple online uh, over the last couple of years. Um, but yeah. I, I, th I took the last year off to um, focus on cycling and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm a, yeah, I'm, a, I'm actually quite excited to to get back, especially if uh, they let people go back into the classroom. That's how I learn best, at least. So yeah, I'm totally with you. Yeah. This is, it's nice to have it online and because you're traveling and training, but definitely it's way better being in class with the prof and, and learning. Mm -hmm. Wow. I am super excited to be, oh, it's, it's just, you know, it's exciting to talk to you guys and, um, and just hear about, you know, your trials and tribulations and, and, you know, you're looking forward to the Olympics and, and what's happening afterwards. And I really appreciate you for jumping on and yeah. uh, chatting with me. It's been really, really cool. I wish I could, I could continue on, but I know, <laughs> I know you're hungry and, <laughs> and I think that we've, we've got, we've covered a lot and, um, I would love to bring you back for, um, you know, a follow-up after the Olympics. Yeah. Like, in September when you've cooled off. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. That would be awesome. So I want to thank you, Jay, again, and our listeners for tuning in for this episode. And don't forget to follow both of us on Instagram, especially Jay with all, and he's on Twitter. And I see La, uh, Lamaru cycling. So are you getting into coaching? One last question. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. So if you're looking to have, find a cycling coach, go talk to Jay. He can hook you up. Um, yeah. So follow us both on Instagram. Make sure that you um, put up a review and ratings. And okay. One last thing, Jay, I have to ask. For anyone young, um, or maybe you talk to injured individuals who are cycling, what are the last little bit of advice you can give to someone listening with regards to your experience and moving forward? I gotta say, just, just make it fun. Just enjoy, enjoy the ride. And, um, like the performance will come from that. I love it. So true. All right. Well, thank you everyone again. Have an amazing day and we'll see you back on the next episode. Thanks.